So in the last video, we left off where we needed to put the chamfers on all the paving stones and the two curbs. I'll just speed this up and do the chamfers on all of the other bits of the paving. There we go. Right, so one more thing to do, which is to put the radius on this curved bit. So we go to fill it and we do that one and we choose a radius of one and accept that and hey presto we've got that finished now then so what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate these and i've got two choices i can actually do a rotate and copy as a rotated one or i can just do a mirror and um, so i'll just do the mirror which is probably easiest and quickest so I select the point at which it's going to mirror them I don't know why it's not allowing me to pick to that point well, we'll try that one okay so it's picked that so we can accept that and I can also do a second mirror uh, that one and we go around this point but the trouble is it's not actually in the middle so if I do it, I'll do it. You can see now that it isn't long enough. So what I need to do is to put in a reference point and I need the halfway point down the middle. So I'm going to draw a line from the end of that one to the end of that one temporarily. So I've now got one line that if I select that, I'll be able to pick out the middle point so now, if I select the bits I want to mirror, do the mirror command and pick that midpoint, it now swings it around and mirrors it on that centre point. So we accept that. Oh, it's deleted it. Oh dear. Ah, Q mirror in. Bad result out. Mirror. Centre point there. And I don't want to arrange the originals, no. Okay, so we're short of a bit of curb stone. And just like the real world, they would put a little piece in. So we need to make a little piece. And how on earth do you do that? Well, let's copy one of those. And if we measure that distance, it should be six inches, yep. So what we can do is we could chop this one up and make a six inch long one. But the problem with that is that, well, I've got two choices. So I could splice it, but just to demonstrate another tool in CAD is what we can do is we can modify it by pushing the end. And we use this command, the press pull. We select the face of the object that we want to play with. And I can now push or pull the length of that extrusion. So it's 24 inches, remember? So we need to push it back by 18. And we end up with a little six inch piece, which I can now move into there. And we filled up the hole. And again, if we use the mirror command, we can pick that point and flip it around so that it fills up that area. But I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll show you another command, which is rotate. So if I rotate it, this is the 2D tool, I can rotate it from one side to the other. And I don't want to do that, I don't want to lose the old one. So what I can do is press C for copy. And not only will it rotate it, but it will also copy it around. So it's the same as moving it around rotationally, but it leaves the old one behind. So I'll accept that and we've filled it off. But you now may notice that these elements are zero gaps again. So this is going to end up looking like it's a completely precast lump of concrete with none of these little joins in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go backwards <laughs> and um, correct. OK, so after a little bit of deleting, and re-chamfering and re-mirroring, we're back to where we should have been. So one last thing I'm going to do before we 
trim this down and start looking at printing it. And I'm not happy with this having a full flagstone. I think actually more likely that it would be lots of small ones. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to grab that and copy it. And we know it's 18 inches. So we go 18. And then the second copy will be 36. So now we've got a little more uniform. Looks a bit better. Yep, I like that. So remember, we're in inches at the moment. So we can now copy that. And because this is locked, that's not going to copy with it. I'm going to copy that there. I make sure that I get something on the very bottom of it. Because if you remember or you watched the other videos, you'll know that dropping it in space doesn't work because it tries to print it in space and it falls out the sky. So we get it a lock on that grid, and that's why I put a grid in my print area. So the red line is the outer edge of the print area. The grid is just gives me some scale to work to and something to lock onto when I drop things on it. And the green line is five millimeters short of the edge of the print plate. And you'll see in later videos when we do supports that sometimes the supports overhang the object that you're trying to print. So it's best not to make the item you want to print bigger than the green one. And that leaves enough space for the oversized feet of the supports to fit. So it's currently a bit big over scale compared to my little man. So what we can do is to grab that and we use the scaling factor and we scale it on a known base point. So you now see it's ready to scale it to whatever I want to put in. And we type in one third, which is 0.3233333. And hey presto, we have one to scale. So you can see from the little man that that doesn't look too bad at all. So how do we get this out of CAD and into our printer? Well, unfortunately, I can't just print it. We need to make it into something that the printer understands. And that's a faceted model with lots of little triangles that it interprets. Then they can then split it down into the layers and print it. So the first thing we need to do is to give it a format that that program, the intermediary program, can play with, and that's an STL file. And luckily in CAD, there is a command which says export. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep the same name and it's going to make it into an STL file. So that saves that, and it's now going to save. So we select the specific object, press return, and hey presto, that has made an STL file. And we'll have a look at that in the next Draw and Print 3D.